Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're a new viewer, welcome in. My name is Sarah, I'm an intuitive guide and a reader, and we're, I, I'm really being called to look into this angels and ancestors guidance, um, guidance from the higher realms at this time, because what I'm discovering, <coughs> just speaking to people in my everyday life, friends and family, that everyone's feeling a little bit lost, even the people that look like they have it all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So these are times that are just confusing. <clears throat> and we are on the verge of this incredible breakthrough. Some might say we've already reached that breakthrough. Others feel like they're at a plateau and they're waiting for their personal breakthrough. But collectively, the work that we're doing is building and building and building you know we are we are building <clears throat> physically energetically spiritually mentally psychologically really on all levels so i want to provide these readings to support you on your journey of awakening and moving through this ascension process moving through this process of from the carbon dna to this crystalline dna so i support light workers and star seeds and twin flames higher level soulmate connections I support anybody on the awakening journey and I dip into a lot of astrology. You're going to see more and more astrology on the channel. You can check out my website. It's in the description box below. I offer readings. I don't think I have my coaching sessions on there, but I will put them on there. I have coaching sessions as well, um, individual coaching sessions. These are all live sessions, so <clears throat> live phone calls and readings with me where you can ask questions. They're interactive. And in addition, I have workbooks for those on the Twin Flame journey that will be coming out. It's a Twin Flame workbook as well as a Divine Masculine workbook and a Divine Feminine workbook. So you can buy them as a bundle or you can purchase them separately. And in addition, the next coaching program will be coming up in the fall. So sometime in September, I don't have a solid cemented date yet, but this will be the third coaching program that I have uh, that I have launched over the past two years, actually past year, uh, year and a half. And um, they've all been a little different. So we'll talk more about what that's going to look like when we get closer to that time. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and let's start with the Angels and Ancestors deck. Making sure, actually, this this deck. Okay, and then we'll we'll head over to the Shaman's Dream deck. And I just want to... Let everyone know that, you know, this, this concept of healing that we're constantly having to heal, heal, heal isn't sitting right with a lot of people. You, it's a lifetime of healing. It's a lifetime of releasing. It's a lifetime of learning. That's what we're here to do. We're here to learn. This is earth school. So there are times when you need to take a break from the healing process. You need to take a break from the ascension process. You need to take a break from the twin flame journey and you need to just be, you need to just live and just be and just exist and just appreciate what's directly in front of you. And that's why I'm, I'm not keen on labels at this point. I'm not keen on labeling things a certain way, good or bad, twin flame, not twin flame, or even a karmic. Um, and I think, I'm beginning to realize I don't think it's proper to identify somebody as a karmic. It's a karmic connection or relationship. It's karmic in nature, but that person themselves is not karmic. That person themselves is just the lessons are flowing through that individual and vice versa so that the karma can be cleared. So I think we need to really lift away from the labels and really um, focus on our own individual journey and own individual healing. There's a lot of lashing out that's going on right now. There's a lot of anger there's a lot of you know suppressed energies and I guess I would say suppressed and repressed depending on the individual energies that are coming to the surface and we just want to be careful with our words we want to be careful with the name calling we want to be careful with the way in which we're interacting with individuals the way in which we're communicating with ourselves and with others at this time so let's go ahead and pull some cards here high priest and intend and create interesting looks like he has the help of a hawk i've been seeing hawks i don't know about you guys but i've been seeing hawks like crazy i have a drive i do every week it's about an hour each way um and it's mostly along the water i'm very very fortunate in that way 
and um, beautiful, beautiful hawks and ospreys, which can sometimes easily actually be identified as hawks. Um, ospreys are often found, you know, where there is water. So, and then there's what I believe to be, I guess it could be an osprey nest my dad and I were discussing, but it looks to me like at first glance, I thought it was an eagle's nest because it was gigantic. And my dad said, well, osprey nests can often, you know, they're big birds as well, and they can often build really huge nests. So I see that every time I take this drive weekly. And I always see that as a sign, you know, of building, a sign of renewal, a sign of birth, a sign of new beginnings. But yeah, intending and creating. So making sure your intentions are aligned, making sure that what it is that you want to create and put out there in the world, especially when it comes to 2023. Um, you know, 2022, the first half has been really challenging. It's seen a lot of the feminine energy really just feeling exhausted and tired all the time and not necessarily feeling active or wanting to be active or <clears throat> being able to be active, being able to carry out the activities you wanna do, the duties, the responsibilities, just everyday stuff has seemed, it's almost like you're, you're running through quicksand. That's kind of, you know, that's the, that's how it can feel on this journey when you feel really exhausted. <clears throat> rest and journal, you know, where we're balancing our energies, we're heading towards inner union. So you could find yourself feeling more feminine at this time. Um, and as you do that, it's going to ask you to surrender. It's going to ask you to release. It's going to ask you to sit still. And that can be very uncomfortable for someone who's been running the masculine program for a long time, which honestly, <clears throat> a lot of the feminines as I've discussed in previous you know, videos, a lot of the feminines were running those masculine programs. And as you run the masculine program, you come to this place of, you know, honestly, sheer exhaustion because it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable to constantly be doing, constantly be going, constantly just be on the move. So <clears throat> you're recognizing feminine that you have the power to change your life. You're recognizing first you get into alignment, then you create. It's not that you don't create and then align. You align and then create. Um, face any fears that you have. Align with you know your highest good. Align with the light. Um, again, you know, take a break from healings. Take a break from um, yoga. Take a break from meditations at this time. Just just be. Just find yourself just being and resting and sitting with yourself and connecting with your breath. Um, save the inner child stuff for later. Like just allow yourself to be allow yourself to exist, um, allow yourself to interact with what's directly in front of you and, and what, what it is that you're, the people that are in front of you are presenting themselves this time, the experiences, the lessons. So, you know, this is really the embodiment. What's interesting about this is the high, there's the high priestess in this deck and there's the high priest. So it would be the feminine and the masculine. So this could be identified as a divine masculine energy. Um, but I see it as a very balanced and healed masculine energy. So a masculine energy that, you know, aligns with their highest self and doesn't act from a place of desire, doesn't act from a place of um, need or codependency, doesn't act from a place of lust or control or power or greed, acting from a place of balance, acting from a place of um, peace within, acting from a place of alignment, alignment with who they really are, not alignment with who they're supposed to be, or alignment with um, who they've been, alignment with what they think, um, you know, society has expectations of them, or their job, or their boss, or their friends, or their family, or whatever expectations they place on themselves, but rather aligning with that which is true, okay? So, it's really interesting. Um, you might have glimpses into your future at this time. You might be able to see what's coming or feel what's coming. Some of you have gifts of seeing. Some of you have gifts of knowing or feeling. So you might be able, some of you even have gifts of clear audience where you can hear. So you're just, you're having visions of the future. Okay. You're experiencing these visions. And as you do that, I feel like you are really becoming spiritually connected um, you're becoming more disciplined, having more respect for um, that which has created you, for that which has created this journey, for the, the, the you, the self that has chosen to be on this journey. So I think a lot of you are going to be experiencing a lot more peace on this journey here in the coming days and weeks, okay? A lot more peace, a lot more acceptance. You might call it surrendering. 
So even though this isn't a masculine energy, I actually see that this is a balance of the feminine and the masculine. If you watched my reading from last night, <clears throat> I was called to do a reading like eight o'clock last night. Um, and I, I, you know, I tapped into the feminine and the masculine energy because it's what I was called to do at that time. And what, what I really felt coming through was that the masculines are maturing. The masculine energy is maturing significantly. They're very, their heart is very open. Okay, The heart chakra keeps on coming out for the masculine energy. So their hearts are open. They are starting to um, experience life with uh, an open heart. Um, if their heart was closed off, they're doing work um, behind the scenes okay, to open it, to release the contents that are keeping them held back in their life or keeping them held back from expressing themselves authentically or showing up in relationships. Um, and we talked, you know, a lot about what the feminine is doing and how she's being asked to release fear and really trust. So you're really being asked to free fall and trust and the divine masculine trusts, you know, he trusts himself. So this is about the feminine trusting herself at this time. That again, that healed masculine energy. I'm going to be doing an astrology video. We have this interesting conjunction in the sign of Taurus. It's the North Node, the collective North Node, Mars and Uranus. And I talked about this a little bit in the video yesterday, but what's happening is we're being liberated from the material world or the 3D. So we're experiencing these liberations. We're experiencing these higher soul um, connections, higher soul contracts, higher soul, just the knowing that, okay, I am a soul. I am not a... I am not a human playing the role of a spiritual being. I'm a spiritual being coming down here to play a human for a short period of time in the grand scheme of eternity. I think there's a sense right now, I'm going to write about this on Patreon, I think, but I really feel like there's a sense of grieving what we never had. It's like the sense of, well, I never had this. I never, <clears throat> yeah, I never like things that we wanted. So for some feminines, it's having a child. And, you know, I've, I've, you know, worked with um, my clients and, you know, women in their fifties and sixties, I wanted a child and it never happened. Women in their forties, even late thirties are connecting with that, but it's not a grief that we're able to really express. It's not a grief we're allowed to talk about. Um, and so it's kind of like, we just keep it hush hush. We, we just keep it within. But the other, the other aspect to that is um, just maybe wanting a partner and never being able to find that true divine partner or finding them. And then of course, losing them, which is what, if you're on the twin flame journey, that's what that feels like. And it's what happens. Um, it could be your, your true potential, you know, like I never reached my true potential and feeling like it might never happen. It could just be, maybe you wanted to build an animal sanctuary and you always, that was your dream. It could be that you wanted to write a book. It could be that you wanted to travel the world, but in some way, grieving what you haven't been able to accomplish or what you have never had, but what you always desired. That's circulating right now. And I think a lot of that is connected to the Neptune retrograde, connected to the Saturn retrograde that we're experiencing. So I do offer those Saturn retrograde readings. I offer North Node readings. We look into your own personal North Node and we digest, we discuss that. We, we look into it. We um, we look into what your highest path is in this lifetime, that destined path, but also where you've been in past lifetimes. I also have full moon and new moon readings. So I'm offering those every month as well. And full moon and new moon reports over on Patreon for um, the VIP patrons. I'm really connecting back. I kind of got away from the, the moon energy, but now I'm connecting back into that energy as a way to support you guys on the journey, as a way to understand what is happening from a deeper perspective. So we have this energy of magic guardian, unlock the magic within. And it's interesting because in both of these cards, we've got the wings, which are symbolic of freedom, which are symbolic of sort of, you know, flying the coop, um, leaving the nest, if you will. So leaving the comfort zone, which is what um, we're also confronting is leaving our secured comfort zone and, and flying out into like, you know, greener pastures and, um, and finding that maybe we we're scared. Okay. So having to conquer that fear of going out on our own and life will hand this to you. Um, you know, we're still in the, the, we're still in the grips of eclipse season. So life will hand this to you, whether you're ready or not. Um, as you unlock the magic within feminine, I, you know, I would ask you to honor your past. 
I would ask you to honor the ancestors, honor the, those divine beings and souls who are guiding your way, who are walking with you on this journey, even if it's from the other side, honoring, you know, I talk a lot about the grandparents and I have a very special connection to my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, who I never met in this lifetime, who was a naval aviator. Um, you know, he, he was a lieutenant commander. He flew through the ranks um, of the Navy at, you know, it's at 35. He, he died in a tragic accident with another pilot. They were just doing a routine flight over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and there were onlookers actually who witnessed um, the collision and it was, there were no survivors. And so these four men lost their lives that day. And I believe my grandfather was the youngest one or second to youngest one, I can't recall exactly, but um, the other pilots were older and it doesn't really matter. I'm, a life loss is a life loss, but my grandfather left behind three children and a wife, my grandmother, my dad, and my aunt, my uncle, and forever changed the course of history, forever changed the course of my dad's life, his siblings, my grandmother's life, my life, because I never got to experience my grandfather in physical form. So these divine beings, you know, many of you may have walked that path where you never met a grandparent, but you always felt connected. Um, you may have had an experience, a very spiritual experience. Um, one of my very first powerful spiritual experiences was my grandfather coming through in a Reiki healing session. I had my first Reiki healing session and it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks and, that, and I knew, I knew that he was with me. I knew that he was guiding me. So what a beautiful, loving presence to experience. So connect with the ancestors, connect with um, guardians or angels that you identify with, that whatever that higher power is for you, it's a good time to connect at this time. Um, it's going to help you to stop looking outside of yourself and start looking within for the answers. So becoming your own teacher, becoming your own guide, becoming your own healer, becoming your own um, your own truth, not seeking that, you know, outside, recognizing that you have this power within you and that you always have. So less need to reach outside of self and more desire to connect to that healer within. You're also just manifesting and creating really through the power of your, your free will. Um, there's a lot that I could say about free will. Um, many different thoughts on free will, um, many different kind of variations of what it means to have free will. Do we really have free will? Is it more destiny? Is it, is it a mix of both? Um, it, or is it just that we have a blueprint, you know, a blueprint in our astrology chart and that this is what carries us through life. And we can't really step outside of that. We don't really have the power of control to do that. So maybe those are things that you're thinking about this time. So you have this angel of magic who is connecting with you at this time, as well as the high priest, that divine masculine energy. So you're being directed to, you're being guided rather to really direct your will into action, into creating something. What is it that you wish to create? What is your legacy? What is it that you wish to leave? What is it that you wish to kind of unlock in, within you, inside of you, so that you can bring that gift forward to the world? So for a lot of you, if you're in alignment with your current job or a current career, you just might find yourself taking a different direction, taking on new clients or changing the way in which you do your business or, um, you know, in some way it's changing form. Interesting. We have woodwives, adaptability from the Shaman's Dream Oracle. So yeah, that's kind of a theme that's coming through with a lot of the readings I've been doing is adaptability. So being adaptable to your surroundings, to your circumstances, um, things are ever changing and fluctuating at this time. So as things fluctuate, as they change, um, you're going to find yourself in this energy of um, really, again, needing to surrender, needing to be softer. Um, less aggressive with life, less aggressive with circumstances, and just kind of appreciating that which is. And um, I think 
this is going to help you feminine. I think it's going to help you to, um, step into a place where you have really, you're creating really strong roots at this time. We, we see this with the healed masculine energy here, the high priest. We see this with the magic guardian, this angel of magic, who's connecting you to your inner magic, to your inner being, your inner self, that which is the healer, that which is the, the guide, that which is the divine. Um, you have it within you. It's always been within you. Just unlock the code, unlock the magic. And Woodwives Adaptability coming in here, it's a reminder to ground yourself, reminder that those roots, that, that strong root chakra is what's going to carry you forward and it's going to allow you to bring the blessings in and receive the growth that you desire. Um, this is about, you know, being grounded gives you more freedom, not less. And I think for anyone who's been afraid of commitment historically, this is a really good message that the more grounded you are actually, the more growth you can have, the more expansion you can have, and the more freedom you have. You have everything you need. All you have to do is ground it into place. And, and so take those seeds, take, take what it is that you, take your magic, take your gifts and bring them forth into the world. I love that card. Let's see if we can get a card here. Ooh, let me take this one. Repairing the veil, forgiveness. Yeah, so coming through forgiveness. Um, I think forgiving yourself for, first and foremost is coming through. Um, interesting, we also have reconciliations. So some of you are going to identify this as, you know, with the counterpart, the divine counterpart. Some of you are going to go straight to that place of, oh, this means, you know, reconciliation, reunion. Um, I'm not going to make any promises, you know, I'm not going to, um, I don't really touch on that energy as much anymore. I'm being called to other places at this time. Um, that's part of my fluctuation. It's part of me being adaptable. It's part of me stepping into the high priest energy. And it's part of me, um, connecting to that own inner magic and really connecting to astrology, connecting to energy more, connecting to the, the process of growth and the process of helping people find their purpose, which is what I've always um, woven into all of my readings and, and sessions anyway. Um, that's really where it's always been for me. So um, yeah, we have this interesting, there is a need to reconcile. There is a need to heal something within divine feminine. This is a time of grief for a lot of people. Like I was talking about a time of grieving what we never had, um, grieving, mourning, a time of maybe unnecessary or no, what you might deem unnecessary, but it's really necessary losses from a spiritual perspective. Um, it's time for you to rest and regroup. You know, when you see the wailing tree, it's not a time to run. It's a time to step into that place and plant your roots for a while and, and take this beginner's breath, you know, find out how to forgive yourself, find out how to forgive others, find out how to move forward from a more balanced place. Um, allow yourself to feel any disappointment or loss that is coming through. Allow yourself to feel those feelings, allow yourself to grieve and then move forward from that place, um, putting proper closure in it and and then walk away into, into this beginner's breath. But first, making sure that you're honoring what is. First, making sure that you're, um, you know, repairing that veil, whatever has been, um, whatever has been challenging recently, wherever it is that you may have felt um, you need to make amends, um, wherever you, it is you felt separated from other, separated from, the divine other, the, the counterpart, or separated from self, separated from friends, family, separated from God, um, repairing that veil. So coming into a place of forgiveness. Um, these are really beautiful energies, guys. This is a really beautiful reading. So I'm, I'm super excited that I was called to do this reading this morning so early, delivering the message to you guys. I hope that this helps you in your journey, whoever out there is watching. Again, if you'd like to work with me, my link is down below in the description box. I have several offerings. If you're wanting just a coaching session and not a reading, um, reach out to me because I don't have that on the website. It will take me a few days likely to get that up on the website. But if you're just wanting that, reach out to me and I will send you the information. But otherwise, you can make the payments online and be on the lookout for those workbooks that will be coming soon. Take really good care, guys. Talk to you soon.